It's grand final day at Subiaco Oval between South Fremantle and West Perth. This is the seventh time these two clubs have met in a grand final since the Second World War. South Fremantle lead the battle so far, having won four of the past six encounters. Who'll take home the Premiership Cup? Can West Perth turn the tables or will South Fremantle in their centenary year celebrate in style? Good afternoon everyone and welcome to Subiaco Oval for our coverage of the 1999 Grand Final between South Fremantle and West Perth. There's a terrific history and rivalry between these two clubs, much of it emanating from that era from which our opening vision came. That period between 1947 and 1953 when they shared seven successive premierships and the two clubs actually contested five of the seven Grand Finals. Fremantle team and Gary Bacanara, Bacanara there are two late changes. Yes, uh, Hutchison and Shell come in uh, for Burridge and Whitehead in that particular lineup, so they'll go pretty tall into the forward line. So uh, expect Taylor as we've got him lined up there to uh, to be a crumbing uh, player, could be a dangerous player, but it all hinges on this uh, centre. Uh, Ruck uh, duel with Clancy being a very important player today and the midfield of South Fremantle, they hold the key. If they can get on top and put the West Perth defence under pressure, that's where West Perth like to uh, build their play from that half back and back line. They like to create the loose man with the run and uh, if the midfield uh, doesn't get on top, uh, then South Fremantle could find themselves uh, chasing a lot of West Perth defenders and midfielders around the ground, causing them a lot of trouble. Let's have a look then at the West Perth lineup. And uh, there are no changes to this team. They had to show their hand early today, West Perth, because their reserves team was in the grand final. And we saw players such as uh, Neil Mildenhall and Corey Johnson participating in that team. The good news is that Rayner and Webb are both fit. Some doubt about them during the week. Key players, Gary. Both key players. Rayner, particularly from the back line. Webb gives them another marking option and a bit of mobility around the ground. But once again, uh, Ronnie Skender, a very important player in the, in the game today when West Perth mounted the challenge to South Fremantle in the second semi-final. It was Skender that led the way and it was only when Marty Atkins went into the ruck did South fight their way back and get back on top of West Perth. No Atkins today, so young Clancy, the clash between Clancy and Skender, watch for that one. If Clancy can get around the ground and put some pressure on Rodney Skender, then he, they could be in trouble. Skender's on the ball, Clancy will oppose him, and there's the siren. And the 1999 Grand Final is underway. Clancy and Skender. Clancy hooks it down. It's knocked forward by West Perth's Kelly. No one able to take it cleanly. Comes to the back of the pack and Bottrell. He's tied up. And there's going to be a bounce about 10 metres, 15 metres ahead of the centre line for West Perth. A crooked bounce. Clancy gets to it first. Thumps it into the turf. Rennick went to ground behind plays, back on his feet. Logan was missed by Bootsma. Julian's hand pass was good. That was even better. Bruce lost his footing. Kelly hurriedly towards full forward, but man in front. And that's 50 metres. It should be 50 metres against Fuster. It's not paid. Good mark, Peter Mann. Good start. Oh, great confidence builder for Peter Mann. That's just what he needed. Sends the ball to the outer side of the ground. Magnificent conditions for the grand final. Uh, Bruce has got it again, his second touch. He's got plenty of time to straighten up this time. Goes with a short pass, but ill-directed. And that's Corey McGrath who's taken the mark for South Fremantle. So already the South Fremantle defenders getting a workout as McGrath sends it long up towards centre wing. Wilson missed his opportunity to take a screamer early. Here's Cousins, he slips over. Rigol slips over as well. Hand pass after he got to his feet to Mifka, back to Rigol. So a good chain of hand passes, but eventually he's too slow. Klukas gathers it for South Fremantle, gives it to Worthfold, and the skipper gets his first kick of the match. Sliding effort down there by Curley. Now it's Taylor, he's flung to the ground. Torello's ridden into the ground as well. And Bootsman has a chance for South Fremantle to go by left, but he's kicked it. So South Fremantle, the first hit time inside, they're attacking 50 metres zone. And the skipper and one of the players of the season, Gary, has kicked the first major. Well, oh, great uh, deserving goal for Brad Bootsman, the first one of the 99 grand final. What a stellar season, but great pressure by the South forward line to keep that ball in. There you see Taylor getting the ball. Torella under siege there. Really good tackling, and then the ball comes out to Bootsma on his opposite side, the left side, and he drills the first one. That's a great confidence and a great start for South. The ball back in the centre. 
Little breeze to speak of. Bright sunshine at Subiaco Oval. Forecast high of 24 degrees. It's going to get tough. And a West Perth play has been filled behind play. The umpire's seen it. Oh, it's reportable, well. I didn't see it, but West Perth's Troy Wilson is down. And he's taking a long time to get to his feet. And the kick, it's obviously been seen. The kick is going West Perth's way. Bootsmar, I think it is, is... Well, he's been spoken to by the umpire, and Wilson is hurt. Oh, it was, it was Worsfold that put him down, Wally. Worsfold, the player, now. It's certainly uh, shaking him up, while uh, uh, I think he's, uh, he's seeing stars at the moment. He's uh, very, very floppy. And another 50-metre penalty. Or is it the same one? It's the same one, I think, that hadn't been measured out. Still a lot of pushing and shoving behind play. There's Torella. Now a South Fremantle player's gone down. West Perth want to be careful, or they'll take it off. Skender. Skender's shooting from 40 metres out directly in front. They need the goal to punish South. They've got it. And they all go to Skender. And those that didn't went straight to Wilson. But then uh, Coops didn't capitalise on it. Here's Coops again, outnumbered. McGrath has it. Clears it towards the outer side of the ground. Simmons is there. Will it stay in? It does. He's got time. Spears it back to Kelly on the 50-metre line. He plays on. Kicks from 50 metres. It's a good kick. It's a great kick from Christian Kelly. It is an inspirational kick. More in the reserves grand final. A premiership to Subiaco. 50 points the margin over West Perth. The ball thumped back towards the boundary line. Rennick has it. Grandson of the great Charlie Tyson, who played in that era back in the 40s and 50s that I talked about earlier. And Charlie, I believe, is not well at the moment, so we wish you a speedy recovery, Charlie, when you get to see this part of the telecast. I'm sure he's in the metropolitan area. Peter Mann, short to the half-back line, and Rennick, Regal picking him up. South's just working the ball methodically out of defence. McGrath was loose on centre wing. He goes sh shorter than that towards Bootsmar. Spoiled from behind. Another chance for Bootsmar. Delaney has it. Good hand pass to Corey McGrath. He's at half forward. Looks in towards full forward. He was put down after he kicked it by Simmons. A relay kick to South Fremantle. Mifka is on the mark. He kicks from 45 metres and kicks powerfully and accurately. South are in front. They're 2-1. West Perth are two goals playing in his first senior final on the Fremantle Dockers list and one would think on the verge of a very, very good career in the AFL. Longmuir goes down towards the wing, but there he is, Ron Skender, already asserting his authority on this match. His experience so vital to West Perth as he goes short, finds Rigol, he's had a lot of possessions early. The skipper goes long toward full forward again, fused to there, out-muscled it. I thought oh, Porter taken yeah. high, play on's the call, in goes a the coach does not pick up there by Logan. The whistle has gone, however, and it's going to be a South mm. Fremantle free kick. Gee. I think that's a make-up uh, yes. for the one that he missed, uh, Walt. I agree with you, Gary. Certainly one missed there. Now, Bottrell's going to get the free kick. No mark, but certainly uh, John Porter was taken high. So South Fremantle bringing the ball out of defence. There's a free kick to a West Perth player. A lot of free kicks being given. John Porter, the offender on that occasion, and this is uh, Troy Wilson, who he thought may have been knocked unconscious a little earlier. He was certainly in a big collision with Peter Worsfold. Goes towards centre-half forward. This is Bottrell again. Took his eye off the ball just at the critical time. Simmons making amends. Gives the hand pass off to Bruce, who's run down in a great tackle by Grover. Play on's the call. Chance now for Walker. South from Mantle's tackling has been pretty good. The long kick from Walker goes up towards the wing. Truella seemed to be taken by the arm. Lascott lays the hand pass off to Smith. His first touch is a long kick. Back inside 50 for the Falcons. High flyers, but no marks there. South Fremantle had the numbers momentarily. Now Coops gives it off to Morell, who swings it high up towards the goal square. It's pretty vacant. Gee, the bounce might just favour him. I think it's gone true. Gibby Morell has kicked a miraculous goal. West Perth by five points. I can't help but feel West Perth would be better getting Troy Wilson off the ground and assisting his recovery that way or speeding up his recovery because he's really struggling out there at the moment as Klukas breaks free with the ball, puts it out in front of Rennick, Rennick between left centre wing and left half forward, puts it into the path of Garth Taylor, kicks from 50 and kicks the goal. Souths are back in front. They're 
Perth 3-1, West Perth at 3 straight. News for West Perth and for Troy Wilson as Bootsmark kicks back towards centre wing. Up goes Mifka at the back, he had the sit and had the height advantage to start with. West Perth have been unrelenting in the last 10 minutes but they've got very little to show for it and that would be a concern to their coaching staff. Here's Morell, part of that height advantage on the forward line. The kick down in the direction of Webb, carried him. Here's Fuster again, goal! Surely he's finally got one and West Perth break through. Terribly fumbles, but he's got plenty of time, courtesy of some great shepherding by Cousins. Smith now up on the half forward line, kicks it into the pocket when really a centering kick was the order of the day, and Peter Mann takes a confidence boosting mark. Porter's out on Fuster, Mann oh. has gone back onto Webb, and Mann makes a very bad mistake for an experienced player. Here come West Perth again, free kick six to West Perth, five to South. Morell will take the free kick when the workman retrieves the ball from the building site. John Dimmer coming down boundary side, it's nearly quarter time, 28 minutes have elapsed. It's been a fantastic first quarter in the 99 grand final. Morell is a powerful kick, he puts it to the top of the square, and there's the West Perth mark! Fuster. Fuster it is again! At the moment, it's nine points. He's got it. It's starting to fall into place for Brendan Fuster. Importantly, they've got to stop the supply. They certainly do. Supply is coming from midfield at the moment, despite the efforts of Clancy. But what about this man, Christian Kelly? Had a great season. He's capping it off today. Delivery inch perfect to Brendan Logan. From oh. left half forward, another bullet like Parson Fuster again. He's chopping them up. He's got quarter at the moment. He's going through opponents at a rapid rate in the first quarter. Prodigious kick. The ball in air. Now it's in dispute. It's picked up by Britton. Now Glenn Britton has come onto the ground as we've seen him do it a number of occasions toward the end of the year and he's kicked the goal with his first kick. West Perth, 6-4-40. South to medal, 3-1-19. Souths, Corey McGrath, 5 and 2 for 7, Lucas 3 and 4 for 7, Bootsmar and Bottrell 6 each. Second quarter is underway, South Fremantle need to bridge the gap, but already West Perth starting to take the ball forward. Getting in there was Logan, got it to Julian, the hurried kick, and sometimes that's all it takes. Inside 50 again for West Perth, Porter under pressure from Fuster, now Coops tracking the ball toward the boundary line, he'll pick it up just inside, can he keep it in this time? Runs back, shows some explosive speed, those long steps, got him clear, he kicks up towards the fourth pocket, and a great mark taken by Britton. Playing only his seventh, or rather eighth game of footy, and he's got it, he loves it. Glenn Britton has got his second goal, and West Perth has started the second quarter of the grand final in the best possible way, 7-4-46 to South, 3-1-19. Crashes the pack, and I think it's Clancy who struggles to his feet. The kick back to centre wing is intercepted by Ferguson. Skinned is unattended. Head pass to Kelly. 40 metres out. And there's another one to the Falcons. They're making no mistakes. Senior Delaney, they need a big lift from him, don't they? A senior player who's played a fair bit of uh, AFL footy. They've just got to get on top in the midfield. There's the ball up. No one wanted to go for that one. Rigol put a fist into it. Now it's Bootsman once more. Swings it high and across his body. Up towards the half-forward line. Taylor flew spectacularly. Didn't come down with it, but Worsfold ends up with it. Gives it now to Clancy. The hand pass goes to Rennick. He slipped. Still gets uh, enough time to hook it across his body. Sends it up toward uh, full forward. Uh, G. Curley was there, but suckled off the ground by Taylor. And Darth Taylor's got his second goal. Well, he's down there to sneak them, Gary. And Darth Taylor, a free man on Docker, who's very, very clever around the, the goal sticks, has snuck his second. As the kick goes in towards the 50 metre line. Corey McGrath. No one to kick to. Now he needs that to go out, or else Morell will get to it first. Rennick coming across a little bit quicker than Morell. Has overrun it badly. Now Morell is a thumping kick. Goes short. Perhaps would have been better off kicking long. McGrath charges at it. Had an awkward bounce. Julian tackled around the legs. Britton disposed of. And away goes Rennick. It's not Rennick, it's Grover, I'm sorry. Across the face of the ground. Misses with the kick. After it goes man. It just won't come up. It does now. He's cornered by Skender and he comes bait straight back to where he came, where it came from. Grover on the point of the square. Not a lot happening for Souths at the moment. Here's Shell. He hasn't seen much of the action. Smith is with him. Shell trying to get the hand pass out, but it's all West Perth back there. And eventually Curley, who's been quiet, has the opportunity to clear. Well, that's interesting. It's one way of getting it to your teammate. West Perth have messed it up. Walker 
across towards the centre of the ground. Clunkers has it. Chance for Souths. And the mark has been taken by Parsons. By Parsons coming out on the lead. Kicks from just inside 50. It's coming back. That's a good kick. A very good kick. And a much needed goal to Souths. Delaney. Very indecisive. Again, he goes short. They haven't cleared the defensive 50 yet. Rennick feeds the hand pass off to Bottrell. Now they have. In toward the middle of the ground goes the Bottrell kick. Walker can't pick it up on the half volley. Gets a second chance and swings it across his body to Bottrell. He's run on beautifully for him. A hand pass now. This could set something up. Grove is almost within scoring zone. He will be now. Takes a steadying bounce. South the man will get another one. And they are back in this game. Look at Anthony Grover after kicking the goal. Urging his players on and the supporters are rallying around them, Gary. There's the boundary throw in. Man does the ruck work. Worsfold fumbles, gets it up toward Walker, who fumbled again. Wurz, this is Bootsman, much cleaner with his hands. Goes by right boot to the open spaces. Awkward bounce there for Parsons. Shell's there lending some support. He gathers it, tumbles the kick just ahead of the tackle, but Rigol gets back for West Perth. He has been outstanding so far, really playing a good captain's game. This is not a particularly good kick but Ferguson's there reading the crumbs. Yeah. Mifka to Lascott, he's surrounded. Back to Ferguson, who's got the speed to split the pack. And James Ferguson delivers from the half-back line towards centre wing, and on the lead Simmons. is Fuster. Simmons is clear at centre-half forward. Now he can go and kick from about 50. He's a good kick at goal on the run, and that's an uplifting goal by the Falcons. Been a lot quieter in this second quarter, Paul Simmons, but still telling when he gets the ball. Hurried kick forward by Julian, not particularly effective. Socket away by Hutchison. Simmons couldn't control it. Rennick and Hutchison collide. Hand pass to Hutchison at close quarters was a bit hot. He gets control of it to Klukas. That's well done. Now he's made some space with that turn, but can surrenders some of the advantage as he hooks towards half forward. Opportunity for Souths here. If they can get it across, if Shell can get it across to Clark, Shell takes the kick himself. I think he's got it. That came back a long way. Quick reply by Souths. 9-7 to 7-1. It's back to 18 points again. Both teams running out of time if they want a late goal. Free kick this time is going West Perth's way. Man penalised for draping his arm over Skender's shoulder. Skender kicks inside 50. McGrath. Taken by Logan. Hand pass goes straight to Delaney. That could be dangerous. Taylor, who was taken from the ground a moment ago, comes back on. Good hand pass and good pace. Gets it to Klukas. Klukas goes long towards full forward. And the mark has been taken by Clark. Clark from 50 metres. It's a good kick. Has it got the distance? No. That's a good mark. It's not a good mark. It's a goal. There's a bit of feeling at the moment, a bit of interest in this game. Here's Regal. He's 55 from goal. Bruce on the end of the lead. He's only about uh, eight or nine metres in from the boundary line. It's a good kick, though. He's pretty reliable in front of goal. Kick 43 for the season during the qualifying games, and he's got his first this afternoon. West Perth a 2-2. Souths are yet to score. Westfold from just behind the centre line, kicks towards half forward. Clark the target and he takes a good mark. Now Ma wants it square. That's exactly where it's gone. Great kick. Yeah. He's still a long way from goal. He had to drift back up to the 50 metre line to get away from Wilson. But gee, it was a good kick from Michael Clark right across the half forward line. It will take a good kick, but he's got a light sea breeze behind him. That is a good kick. That's a very good kick. Souths have got there first. West Perth at 2 5 17, Souths 1 3 9. Whitelaw puts a glove into it, knocks it clear. Webb was there. Now it's McGrath once more. This is Corey McGrath who steadies with a kick to the half forward line. Lascott dropped what he should really have taken. He was at full stretch though. Now Klukas gives it to Clark on his non preferred foot. This is a great effort by Clark. And South Command have got the first in this second quarter. Throw in on the outer wing, left centre wing for South. Mann and Fuster, neither getting a decisive ruck knockdown, taken by Rennick. 
comes infield to McGrath, and McGrath kicks towards full forward, just too high for Ma. It's taken by Worsfold, who's kicked the goal. Well, that's a terrific goal by Worsfold. Bottrell goes after it, gives it off to Rennick. Rennick dragged down on a good tackle, should have been rewarded. Kelly, slick hand pass to Webb, who's pushed off his kick by Delaney. He goes down onto his knees, shovels it out for Garth Taylor. Taylor now, South the middle with a two-goal buffer. Squaring pass, finds Kluges back in the middle of the ground. Well, he's a loose player at full forward. So West Perth a minus one in the back half as the long kick goes up towards Mar who flew in spectacular fashion. Worsfold got one a moment ago. Now he slips. Hand passes to Mar. Goal coming up for South Fremantle. They've got three clear. South Fremantle have just put a dent in West Perth's grand final aspiration. South start the final quarter of the second semi-final with a 14-point lead, but West Perth will take it out of the centre through Ryan Webb. He's in trouble. Gets the hand pass away to Kelly. And Kelly gets the kick that West Perth so desperately needed. Down towards full forward. Coops fell forward. Not given the kick. Players in on top of the ball. And there will be a bounce 45 metres out from the Falcons' goal. Ross, I'll put it to you that it's going to take a particularly standout performance from someone perhaps like Brendan Fuster to win the game for West I was going to mention that when you asked me before and I'd suggest that would be uh, quite right. You need someone to stand up and kick, kick a couple of good goals. It might be Bruce. Well, it might just be Bruce from 40 metres out. He's got just what John Dimmer would have hoped for. And West Perth fans are alight again, waving the flags because Bruce has got his second goal. Only six minutes gone in this final quarter there, Simmons. 70 to 62 is the score. Klukas read it beautifully, fed the hand pass to Walker. Walker with a, a little dummy, kicks the ball into the pocket. The lead the, oh, there came from Parsons, and he is marked about 46, 47 metres out from goal. Yes, and Brett Cousins there just uh, thought he'd go back and try and find Parsons. When the ball had already been kicked, he should have kept his eye on the ball. When he then couldn't find Parsons, he turned to find him in front of him. And you must just try and keep your eye on the ball all the time as a backman. State player this year for Western Australia. Prodigious kick from Parsons. Has he got his thread? I think so. Great kick by Zane Parsons. And again, South Fremantle are able to provide the steadier. Luke Rayner with his chin bandaged up. Certainly a lot of players out there are wearing the scars of battle this afternoon. It has been very tough and very hard as Rayner goes down the middle of the ground. Atkins is there to provide the contest. Skender couldn't make it stick. Julian's hand pass found the big man. West Perth are away. Here's the racehorse Ferguson who loves these long runs. Two bounces. He kicks West Perth right up towards full forward. They need a mark here from Webb. They've got it. It's not Webb. In fact, it's Fuster who's kicked the goal. So Brendan Fuster, the man that we suggested might be the one to turn the game for West Perth, has kicked a goal against the flow. His first this afternoon, Ruskin, probably the Falcons would have hoped by this stage he'd chip in with three or four. It's been a terrific second semi-final. It has been pretty tough throughout, but it really came to life in the third quarter. That's palmed down beautifully by Longmuir to Worsfold. High towards centre-half forward. Man misses the mark. He gets another chance. It's socket away from him by Rayner. And it'll stay in play. Taylor and Rayner. Oh, terrific tackle by Rayner on Taylor. And the umpires let it go. Laskoff mops up as he's done so often in the latter part of the season. Rayner taking a long time to get to his feet. The kick to half forward is poor. Delaney meets it for South, but he's outnumbered. Simmons has it. Sends the hand pass wide. Johnson has it. Johnson oh. goes for distance. Long to the goal square. And Fister stands tall and takes the mark. He's 20 metres out from goal. He's almost directly in front. And a goal here will make the margin two points. Yes, and, and it deservedly two for Luke Rayner's tackle on the outer oh, side on fantastic. Taylor, who had the sit bit of pace, but uh, Rayner brought him down without interfering. An important kick. Fuster cannot afford to miss it. He hasn't. The Falcons are within a goal. Fuster's got two. Look at the tension there. He's not hiding her feelings, wearing her feelings on a sleeve. <laughs> Clark on for Longmuir. Ball up at centre field. In goes Galt, his kick smothered. Smith was there, but somehow South Man will tumble it forward. Two points the margin. Out comes Parson. Help without it. Plans the call. Boots will gathers it up and kicks on goal. He's just missed. Now he's got it. Luke Rayner at fullback. They need a rapid clearance. 
It's Wilson who offers the lead. He's going to hit the mark. He can't. Had to go one hand. Worstfold has it. Gets it down to Galt. Galt from inside. 50. Has kicked the goal. And that's it. No doubt about it now. That's put the game beyond West Perth's reach. Still the crowd enthralled at this contest. It's been a terrific one all day. The ball comes to uh, Rennick. Away he goes. Bouncing the football. Darren Rennick, forward of centre now, goes for distance. Up towards the full forward zone, flying there and taking the mark is Clark. Let's see if he can turn this into a goal. It would be an uplifting one for South Mantle. Clark kicks through the footy. That's a great goal by Michael Clark. He's now got two goals. Sometimes you've got to risk something. Perhaps West Perth have done just that. The kick to Rayner is a good one. He's in the centre square, gets away from Walker, but miss kicks badly. But then Porter at full stretch couldn't take the mark. Truella in on top gave a good contest. Corey McGrath relieves the pressure for South. Crowley goes back on the flight of the ball. But Taylor only had eyes for the ball. And he did well to get around Curley and take the mark. Then he missed kicks to Corey McGrath. It bounces off his chest and lands with Logan. This is a terrific contest. Back goes Corey McGrath, misses the mark. Attempting to soccer the ball away was Atkins. The hand pass is knocked down. Good play in there by Porter. Players in on top of the ball. That must be a free kick to Coops. He got there first, was on the ball, and players landed on top of him. Logan's free in the pocket. That's the way the kick goes. Beautifully weighted before Toby McGrath could get back to him. And Logan now can take a bit of the pressure off for West Perth. About 35, 40 metres out, but on a very acute angle. We're almost behind him, and he's with the wrong foot. But it's a good kick. That's class. That's a beautiful kick from Brendan Logan. And West Perth get a little bit more breathing space. In the left full forward pocket for South Fremantle. Again, Fuster a decisive knock, but it goes straight to Bootsma. Onto the left boot, hooks it up towards the edge of the 10 metre square. The pack falls over. South Fremantle through. Taylor's got another goal. He's now got three goals going to Taylor. Hello, Rennick is off the ground. Ferguson's back on. Slips a clever hand past the Fuster, who then takes Walker on. That wasn't intelligent. In comes Britton, trying to reclaim possession for West Perth. He did momentarily, now he does, that's better. And here's Lascott. They haven't been forward very often. Poor kick. Taylor's the target of Morell. Players going in very solidly. Lascott gets it back again to Britton. Britton gets around Klukas. Britton goes long towards the square. Opportunity now for West Perth. Good attempt to mark at the back, but Simmons runs onto the ball. And didn't West Perth need back? They move to 11-8, South to 10-5, and now Curley comes off with Cramp, and Smith will go back on. Simmons has two, and West Perth just maintain that slight ascendancy. Fuster has the ball, sorry, Skender has the ball, at left centre wing. We've now played the best part of 15 minutes in the final quarter, and no one, neither team has kicked a goal. Lascox off, Curley will go on. Smith's coming off. Souths have the ball. West Perth's defence in disarray. There's no margin for error here. Smith, who's injured, has the ball. It wasn't, it was Mifka. He gets it away. Mifka's injured. It's with Curley who's just come on to replace an injured player. Logan was loose. They ignored that. Go infield and find Britton. An important play, this. West Perth is short on the ground at the moment, I suspect. The bark is missed by Bruce. McGrath can't come out with it. Chance for Taylor. Spills in the direction of Kelly. Kelly gets it to Regal, who goes without it. Regal picks it up, gives it back to Britton. Britton, 40-55 out. Kicks long towards full forward. Bruce! They're directly behind him. He must kick the goal, and he has. West Perth are in front by three goals. The question is now being asked of Souths. Short kick in. Short kick in has fa found Klukas. A lot of work to do now for Souths. 19 points. Only one goal kicked in the final quarter. And that's been kicked by West Perth. Chance at the back of the pack for Souths. But Simmons will get back to it first. He had a blistering first half. Kicks towards the centre square. It doesn't carry to Logan. Logan sends the hand pass out to Big Ron Stender. Pops it over Hutchison's head. Here's Kelly, another brilliant player in the first half. Long kick. Oh. At a time when players from both teams are almost out on their feet.
Christian Kelly has found something special. And West Perth moved to 13 13 91 to South 10 6 66. Well, that just might break their heart. Uh, what a build up. Uh, by there's the kick 50 odd meters out on the wrong foot left foot well shepherded in the end by Regal but what a kick was he happy with that South West Perth players coming from everywhere almost a mirror image of his magnificent goal in the first quarter Klukas got an illegal disposal away and the umpire was right there so there's umpire Wayne French just explaining the situation to Klukas but it was quite obvious now things are starting to go against South the at every turn. There's Logan settling things down and shielding his son from the his eyes from the sun, I should say. Seven kicks and seven handballs. Relatively quiet by his standards, but he's done some very important things. Out comes Clancy. Couldn't quite hold the mark. Britton was slung to the ground. Fused to try to get the ball out. It comes to Truella. Onto his right boot. He swings it up into the uh, pocket. Coming out is Digby Burrell. He's got it. Onto the left boot he goes. A high floating kick toward full forward. Fisting it away. In the end there was a uh, Parsons to Toby McGrath. The hand pass to some very, very tired players. One of them Parsons. Spears the ball out towards... Uh, Garth Taylor is marked at right half back. South Fremantle facing defeat here. Goes along the line, does uh, Taylor, and finds Longmuir. So Justin Longmuir looking at something. Up forward, goes for another short pass. Delaney's there, took it cleanly. He's got some speed still in his legs. Up towards the half forward line, Mars had a poor day, fell over, Nifka, perhaps another flag for him, what a career he's had, what a way to cap it off, Delaney's high kick will be tracked down there by Julian, who's taken a safe mark at right half back. West Perth lead by 25 points, we're now a... just beyond the 21 minute mark of the final quarter. Sorry, well I don't think there'll be a lot of time on there, hasn't been a lot no. of goals scored. No, South need to kick goals quickly to get back into the game, Morell was the target, Clark over Ooh. the top takes the mark. He needs to move it on. Kicks into the centre square. The umpire wants it to come back. Morell being spoken to. He was injured earlier. He's back out there now with thigh and knee heavily bandaged. Michael Clark at left centre wing for Souths. They've lost their momentum. Kicks long towards centre half forward. Parsons sets himself, but the kick carried him. And there is a strong mark taken at the back of the pack by Troy Wilson who's made a very good comeback. Here's the replay. Kick short to Regal. Regal's kick to Skender is OK. And it would seem at this time that West Perth have the game in their keeping. 13-13 to 10-6. They're slowing it down. The kick is OK and finds Truella. He could have gone to, to Rainer, chose not to. Kicks on in that direction now. And Rainer's hurt his shoulder again as Bootsmark came across to spoil him. They'll finish up players short if they're not careful as Corey McGrath ran into Rayner and Truella comes in to remonstrate. Throw in at 60 metres from West Perth's goal. This would be an amazing and incredible victory if West Perth were to pull it off. The hand pass missed the target. That was Regal. Rayner was there. That's a tired kick. Bruce comes out and picks it up. He takes on Taylor. Gets around a couple more. This is Regal. Back to Rayner. Kick short. Good play, Simmons. Mark not paid. Play on the call. Toby McGrath clears the ball for South. Back towards centre wing. Wilson charges at it and does the right thing. Knocks it into the path of Truella. Truella's kick carries Logan. Coming to meet it is McGrath. It comes back to Logan. He's at 50 metres. Kicks to the goal square. Crucial contest. The mark missed by Bruce. Well tackled. It comes back again to Kelly. That's four. And that's game set and match. That's the 1999 Premiership. What a performance by the Falcons. They're 14-13. Souths are 10-6. They came into the games as underdogs. They haven't beaten Souths all season. They've had injured players all over the ground. And they're going to finish stronger than Souths. Best man on the ground in the uh, in this first half. Pretty quiet in the third quarter, but uh, brilliant in the last. West Perth fans are celebrating, and the players are really starting to enjoy this now. Skender trying to force it forward. Clark feeds a hand pass to Bootsford, and the skipper for South Mantles away. Goes onto the left boot. The lead there came from Mark. Couldn't take the mark. Worst fall with it from 50. Snaps across his body to a vacant goal square. This could bounce through and will. So a belated goal by South Fremantle coming from the boot of Peter Worsfold. And they've come out and turned the tables. 
Corey McGrath kicks back to the half-back line. Skender gets an unfortunate bounce and there it is! Westbrook has won the 1999 Grand Final and what a Grand Final it was! It's one of the better WA Grand Finals that I've seen and West Perth have won it by 25 points. West Perth 14-13, 97 have defeated South Fremantle 11-6, 72. The margin 25 points in favour of the Falcons as John Dimmer makes his way down from the coaching box and there are scenes of jubilation amongst the West Perth players. A disconsolate South Fremantle group all over the park at the moment. And the West Perth players are celebrating. What a game. West Perth hadn't beaten South Fremantle all year. Three games between the teams. There's Marty Atkins. Won't he be so disappointed? He meant so much to the team throughout the year and especially in the second semi-final when they defeated West Perth out through suspension today. Part of the crowd as the West Perth song, it's a grand old flag, rings out. There's the final score, West Perth 14-13-97 to South 11-6, 72. The margin 25 points and Gary, who would have thought that it would be West Perth, the team that had to play in the preliminary final, the team that didn't have the AFL preparation that would have finished on the stronger. Yes, and uh, as we see, Peter Warsfold uh, pretty destroyed, as you are after a losing grand final. And I think we've got uh, Paul Mifka with uh, Gus Seebeck down there. Gus? Yes, well, Paul, congratulations, mate, firstly on today and also on a sensational career. You must be thrilled to finish it in such a way. Fairy tale end of my career has been, been the best advice. The guy's just fantastic today. Just when we're in crunch time, they really put their heads down. It was just amazing how they just finished off. Yeah, mate, they were injured and, uh, you know, there's a few shoulders, a fair bit of cramp, but you just got to be so proud of them the way they stood up and just took it up to South Fremantle all day. Oh, yeah, just both teams just went in so hard and I think it's going to be a very lot of sore bodies in the next couple of weeks. I'm, I'm absolutely hurting. I think a lot of guys, other guys are, but it's worth it. Mate, uh, 283 games now. Any chance of going on for 300 next year? What's the chances, mate? About zero. Well, mate, congratulations. You deserve it. Go and enjoy it. Congratulations, mate. Paul Mifka was a, a great performance and Rob Willard has Brendan Fuster, such an important player in the first half. Brendan, congratulations. There was a lot of pressure on you early in the week about performing and, and playing such a big part in today and you never let him down. Well done. Thanks, mate. Uh, you know, it was a whole team effort, eh? We, we went out hard, hit them hard, and that's what we were told to do, so we did it. And uh, look at the scoreline, we've, we've done it, eh? You really set, up in the, set it up in the first quarter. You were great. How hot and how tough was it out there? It was damn hot, yeah. Someone's in among on the spot too, but um, the boys, the crew, the back line just held up magnificently all day and just kept pumping the footy in. And we had so much footy in the first quarter there, it was just magnificent. The midfield was great, they really sort of took it forward. They uh, gave you every opportunity, the passing was good. And uh, Christian Kelly to finish with four go uh, goals from the midfield, that was brilliant. Magnificent, he's well deserved too, he works hard, great fella. And uh, I tell you, the boys are going to be ecstatic tonight. Mate, you deserve the win, and I really think WA crowd was the winner today. Thanks, Rob. Thanks, Rob. See you later. Yes, thanks very much, Rod. And to Gus Seebeck, talking there to Brendan Fuster and Paul Mifka, respectively. The second premiership for Paul Mifka. He was part of the team in 95, as were Steve Trewella and uh, Brendan Logan, both dual premiership medalists now. And James Ferguson gets his second premiership medal. He does having, indeed. Uh, played Clayton in Watson. Claremont's team in 1996. See Clayton Lascock there with his shoulder, with his arm in a sling, Wally. I mean, there's so many of the walking wounded. There's a dis disconsolate South Fremantle group, but uh, you can never explain the feeling of being in a losing grand final. I think probably that face on Marty Atkins can probably best describe it. Words don't do justice to it, but it's a, it's a, it's a feeling of desolation. But in stark contrast, are these West Perth players who are just, uh, they're just relishing the moment. There's Peter Worsfold. I wonder if this was his last game in West Star Rules football. There's been some uh, talk that he might retire. Troy Wilson just relaying the message to someone. He looked as though he wasn't going to play any part in this game after that solid clash with Peter Worsfold in the first quarter. He, uh, I'm sure, didn't really know where he was and uh, took a long time.
time to recover himself. It was really only in the last quarter that he looked as though he had presence of mind and was actually making a contribution. But West Perth were just about to down to their last men with all the injuries, Smith and Lascock with shoulder injuries. Morell came off at one point with what appeared to be a leg injury. Wilson, of course, with his own problems. They really were the walking wounded. And it's been a terrific effort by them. Great disappointment. Former ABC employee. Enjoying the moment. Good on you, Zora. But great disappointment for Souths in their centenary year. There's John Dimmer. As Phil Lamb mentioned, a terrific coaching performance by him. He's been at the helm of West Perth now for five years. Three grand finals and two premierships in that time. That's a terrific effort by John Dimmer. We might just uh, have a look at some match statistics if we can. Firstly, for South Fremantle, Taylor has kicked three, Clark two, one each to Boots, Marshall, Ma, Worsfold and Grover. For West Perth, Christian Kelly from the midfield kicked four telling goals. Simmons, Fuster and Britton got two each. Let's Logan, go the, uh, Bruce and Skender all got one. And there's uh, Tony McHale and Peter Sermich looking very disappointed as they leave the ground and the South Fremantle.